Hey guys, what should brands know to stay relevant in 2022 and to get ahead of the curve online with all the changes that are coming? We're about to unpack this right now. Hey guys, if we've not met before, my name is Jessica Phillips with Now Marketing Group and the Relationship Marketing System. And my personal mission is to help you love more, give more, and be more through the art of authentic relating, getting past that surface level stuff and truly connecting with those that you want to build a relationship with. And I love that word relationships so much. Relationship marketing is my jam and it is a big hot topic for 2022. In fact, we are going to dive into all of the tips from some of the top digital smarties out there online to tell you what your brand can prepare for in 2022 in order to stay ahead and grow that repeat and referral business. And trust me, there's a lot of changes, people. There is a lot of changes. I know this video is long, but you're definitely gonna wanna get a pen and paper so you can jot down some of these shifts that are taking place because we are entering a whole new world. Web 3.0, so stuff is about to change. (laughs) But before we dive into all those tips, I feel it's important for you to understand what is Web 3.0, AKA the metaverse. All right, Web 1.0 was all about access to information on demand. You could click and type into your search bar anything that you wanted and could get content and information, knowledge on demand. That's when most of our websites all looked like brochures at that time, right? But it was a glorious thing and we evolved rather quickly into the second evolution of web, which was all about social. Being able to connect with people anywhere, no limits to demographic at any time and have real time communication. That was so powerful because it helped us evolve our brands to build true relationships with those that we wanted to do business with and build community with. Now we've shifted rather quickly into what is Web 3.0, the metaverse, and it is all about co-creation. Co-creation with our communities, meaning that we are allowing our communities to have more control, have their own personalized user experience with our brands and with how they're communicating online, how they're consuming content, and how they are getting their overall experience. Now that we know what Web 3.0 is, let's dive into the expert recommendations of what to be prepared for in 2022. 2022. Huh. Hey, it's Chris Strub, the Giving Day Guy. What are my predictions for 2022? Look, I really think that after two terrifying years here in the States, we're going to see real life in person, yes, in person events start to make a gradual comeback. And as those events start to rematerialize, I want you to remember those basic things that we used to do back before March, 2020, to really make your live event a craveable, shareable experience. Of course, you can you can have some really awesome uh, speaker gifts like Jessica does at Social Media Week Lima. But for all of your attendees, make sure that you're getting one of those like cardboard Instagram frames and encouraging people to take pictures. Uh, Make sure that you're including your social media handles and hashtag across all of your different printed collateral. And make sure you're just setting up a tripod and an iPhone, kind of like I did here today and asking for video testimonials. Create that craveable, shareable FOMO experience for those who may be on the fence about wanting to come back out Um, or may not be able to come back out for health reasons. Building a craveable brand in 2022. We survived 2020 and we survived 2021. Even with things becoming somewhat normal again, they still aren't. We are getting back into meeting people in person and finding our new normal throughout all of this stuff that we've been through. So my prediction for building a craveable brand in 2022 is personal connection is now more important than ever. 
people have spent hours and hours and hours browsing through TikToks and Instagram and Facebook feeds, just trying to kill time sitting at home, looking at so much stuff. It is about you providing value, connecting with your audience, caring about your audience, and not push marketing. It is about you pulling in, knowing what your audience needs, what your audience is struggling with, what your audience needs to connect with you on a way deeper level than ever before. So I'm telling you, if you want to build a craveable brand in 2022, there's not going to be any way around really getting personal, becoming vulnerable, sharing your struggles, sharing your successes, celebrating your community, and really connecting with them on such a deep level you might never have before. And you're gonna be surprised how that suddenly turns around into a successful business. Hi everyone, I think the future of marketing is really kind of crazy right now because of all the things that have happened during the pandemic. And one of the things I've been talking about with my clients is that we are entering the era of unintended consequences. And what I mean by that is that I think consumers our neighbors, our friends, our family have been changed in millions of small ways during this pandemic. It may take a decade. It may take a generation for us to really figure out everything that's happened, how consumer habits, wants, needs, hopes, dreams have all changed because of the pandemic. We're already seeing pretty dramatic changes, but there's going to be a lot of subtle things, a lot of small things that aren't going to be apparent for a long time. So this is a time to be patient. It's a time to listen, to double down on your listening efforts. Get out there, talk to your customers, see what's going on, see how they're living their lives. Notice what's different. See how you can apply your strengths to these changes that we're seeing in the marketplace and that's, I think, the key to surviving and thriving in this era of unintended consequences. Hey guys, Jim Fuse here from Fusion Marketing, and I wanted to give you my three predictions for 2022 and what I think that uh, brands and marketers need to think about for next year. One is live shopping is going to continue to grow. I've uh, been on Amazon now for a little over a year, going on a year and a half. As an influencer, it's been amazing. The opportunities with not only live shopping, where but brands are approaching me, and I think that's going to expand. The second thing is what we call shoppable videos. Doing short videos where you're demonstrating a product, not only is this something that Amazon's doing, but I think that other brands other companies will start to want that user generated influencer generated content how can you put together short concise videos that catch people's attention we're seeing it on platforms like TikTok and instagram so another thing to do as well as even on your youtube channel but i think that's another continued growth area and finally video itself there's still a lot of people not doing live video not doing recorded video and so there's lots of opportunities to not only get better, but to improve the technology keeps changing with the rollout of 5G and other things. It's allowing us to go live in ways we never thought of before. So stay on top of it. Keep ahead of it because it's constantly changing and you don't want to get left behind. Have a great 2022. What's up, everybody? Craig Severson here. And what makes a craveable brand what makes your content on your social media platform just become something that that people want to consume and be a part of well it's all about creating relationships and having real 
conversations. And the brands of tomorrow that are going to win big on social media are those that are going to double down on having authentic conversations and really building relationships with their clients. So there's three things that I really strongly suggest you do if you want to create that craveable brand, especially as we move into 2022. How do you make your social media content matter and be even more impactful? So here's three things that we can do. Number one is that we want to create value. Now that's a buzzword we throw around a lot, right? Create value in your posts. And uh, that begs the question, how is value created? Well, in my opinion, value is created through implementation, through taking action, right? That's where everything happens. So if you want your content to be truly valuable, what do you have to do? You have to inspire, you have to motivate, you have to empower your audience to take action, big or small, they need to implement. And that is where the value is created. And the more that you can empower them to take action, the more value you'll create. And also the more hooked to your content they become because they're getting these hits of success by engaging with you, eventually in even purchasing or, or really investing in being a part of your community, right? So that's number one, be valuable by creating and empowering and inspiring and motivating people to take action. Number two is have real conversations. Whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, your converse, your audience is having a conversation right now. So it's more than just, oh, I'm going to start broadcasting content out, pumping content out. Those days are done. We don't want brands. We don't want companies to just throw content at us. We want real conversations. And they're having these conversations. You just have to tap into them. So you got to put in the work to find out what conversations are they having and how can you meaningfully contribute to those conversations. That can be as simple as asking questions and listening, or it can be as, you know, a little bit more complex, like doing market research and figuring out what are their biggest goals, what are their obstacles, what are the things they're working on, right? All of that is really important for having a real, true, authentic conversation. And again, they're already having the conversation. You just need to start participating in it. And then number three is be different, you know, and I don't mean that you need to be different in terms of platform. You don't need to be on every single platform. You don't have to be, you know, spreading yourself thin. Instead, focus on the platforms where your audience hangs out. That's the most important. Where is your audience? Focus on that platform, but focus on being different on that platform. You know, it's like duck, duck, goose, right? What does everybody want? They want the goose. We don't even listen for the duck anymore, right? I got little kids. Can you tell? Duck, duck, goose is my analogy. Uh, you want to be that goose. You want to be the thing that's different, that people are looking for, that they're excited about, right? So focus on your platform, even like tried and true platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, YouTube, these things have been around for a while now and we're all kind of used to it. And there's some rules that we play by to be more effective, but then you got to take those rules and say, Hey, how do I do things differently? How do I stand out? Even if it's just a little bit so that people start to pay attention. Okay. So those are my three tips for you. Number one, create value. Number two, have real authentic conversations. And then number three, be different. Do those things. And you're going to create a craveable brand and create content that people want to consume as we move forward in 2022. Hey, Mike Gingrich here. And uh, when I think about 2022 and what's going to be needed, um, I think the word upgrade, I think that uh, you're going to see a lot more in social and e-commerce coming together. And that's going to require businesses to upgrade, upgrade what they do online. I think that, um, you know, we oftentimes think of, um, we know some of the basics, you know, Instagram stories, for example, uh, you're not going to be able to keep doing the same old stories, which in many ways, stories were just kind of a push mechanism, uh, but you're going to need to be able to engage more. And Instagram is rolling in some new tools in stories to boost engagement. And so that's going to be important uh, to, to interact with. And uh, you're going to need to upgrade what you do with things like Instagram stories. Um, I think you're going to continue to see new tools for commerce coming in there, making it easier for businesses. We just talked about a few of those on Magnet Marketers, but you're going to see more and more of those shopping tools coming in to Instagram, to other places like that. Um, I think uh, next I want to talk about Google, not necessarily a social platform. However, they're adding more social tools to various things, particularly with the Google Business Profile and um, you know what you see in Google Maps, because uh, mobile users are using that to find things. You're gonna see more of that. Uh, so you need to upgrade your Google Business Profile. 
and pay attention to that. Uh, what Google says, do it. When you go into that profile, they're going to recommend you do things. You need to do those. And then um, you need to upgrade your website because the page experience algorithm really hit a lot of websites and they did not go up in rankings. They went down because of uh, the page experience, the social dynamic of that, that, that it wasn't good for people, it wasn't fast enough. Um, didn't look right on mobile. So those pieces you need to upgrade. And lastly, I think about uh, you need to watch the kind of innovations of TikTok, <laughs> TikTok, Snapchat, others, and uh, take a look at what's happening there. Not necessarily because your business audience is there and you want to do that, but because they're trendsetters and those things are going to trickle down to other platforms. Maybe your platform is Facebook, maybe it is Instagram. They're going to steal from the innovations that TikTok and Snapchat are doing. So you need to watch those, uh, not necessarily you know use those or advertise there, but, but watch those so that you're ready to upgrade when those things come to the platforms that are important for your audience. So I think 2022, a lot more emerging of the blurring the lines of social and commerce to because that's where it's at, that's what's happening. And you need to stay up on some of these things and make some upgrades. All right, this is Mike, take care. What's to happen in 2022? There's a lot of predictions that I have that I've listed all out in the blog, but I'm gonna keep it short for the purpose of this video. It can be boiled down to three words. Our communities, our clients, our team members, everyone wants from our brand three things. Relatability, craveability, and accessibility. Let's break those down. So the first thing, relatability. We want to work with our team members. We just came out of the what was called the great resignation and brands all over were struggling to find team members. People want to connect and work with a brand that values them as an individual, not just a cog in the wheel. And why this is important for marketing is that our brands, who we hire, tells a story about who we are. Our team members are working face-to-face -face with our clients at the end of the day, our customers. They are the ones that are creating that experience. So it has to start from the inside out of our brands of truly having this relatability factor, really understanding who we are at our core, what we're here to do, what our brand manifesto is, and truly why we're doing what we're doing. When we understand that, we will draw in like a magnet versus trying to be a bullhorn, like a magnet, attract in the right people that align with our ideals, our message, what we care about. And they will care about the same things. And that also means that we have to shift our mindset of what we're doing in our businesses to truly put some care, out care the competition, out care the competition as it relates to our customers, but also to our team members. Truly hire the best people that are going to care for your brand, but you have to show up and care for them. That means being real, understanding uh, of, of people and, and what they have to do on a day in day, uh, day out basis, right? Understand what it looks like to truly um, survive and thrive in their work environment. That may mean to invest in ongoing a continuing education that might mean to invest as a brand into their physical fitness and, and put some perks into place. This means rec recognizing who they are and the talents that they bring and truly show up to care for them as the valuable assets that they are. Involve them in into the process of creation with your brand. Create the sense of belonging with your team the culture, everyone as a whole. By doing so, you'll create the sense of belonging with your customers. Relatability with your customers also means understanding who they are, what they care about, the nuances in their day, and really getting crystal clear on who you're there to serve. By doing so, then you become crystal clear on the content that you need to show up with in your marketing. Uh, you get crystal clear on who you need to communicate with on a real basis. And I mean, communicate with them as in having a lunch with maybe a, a top client or doing a survey with some of your clients to understand, hey, what are we doing right? 
but what can we truly improve upon? That relatability factor is going to go so far by showing that you truly care and you're getting to the heart of how you can show up as a brand in a way that impacts others is going to be the difference that makes all the difference. I promise you. The second part, craveability. Create something that people want to come back for and creating not just your product and your service, right? Like people are going to pay for that. You're going to deliver a great product or service. Hopefully that's just business, day-to-day business. But craveability means showing up to create something that is unique, that serves so much that you're giving away some free things like free trainings or, um, you know, creating a a community portal for your clients to engage, or you're creating some social good that people want to be a part of, that craveability means it keeps your community coming back for more. What can you create create as a brand that people want to rally behind, that they're proud to say that they're doing business with you, and they want to insist that their friends, their family members, their coworkers are doing business with you too? Maybe you're creating a new live show, which that's some of the predictions uh, that I have listed out in the blogs, the very specifics of some of this craveability factor, relatability factor uh, as well. But maybe you're creating something that is edutainment. It's educating and engaging, but you're just adding value. You're investing in the people that are investing in you. And that craveability factor, I'm not just talking about new customers. I'm talking about investing in the people that have already invested in you. You're investing in your team members. You're investing in your current clients and community. That is going to create this momentum where your clients become your biggest advocates. And you don't have to worry about continuing to pay to play, right? Your community, your team members, your, your clients are going to want to refer you on and create this momentum that grows your repeat and referral business. Those two things are huge. So relatability, craveability, and accessibility. The third is make it stupid simple to do business with you. Do business where your community is hanging out. If this means on social media and they're hanging out on Facebook, make sure if you have an e-commerce brand that you're showing up there and you have your cart engaged and, and activated in the place that they're hanging out. So it is a smooth and frictionless transaction. If you have an online website, make sure that it's easy to do business with you. Put your your mindset in the in the mindset of your customer and pretend that your customer is searching for you online, seeing do you show up, what kinds of information shows up, and how can you improve the process overall to do business with you? Where can you reduce friction and where can you add in personalized experiences and delight? Those three things will completely shift your business. So that's where we are at and that's what you can prepare for. And it's an exciting time to be a human because truly it is a level playing field. It's about relatability, knowing our communities, knowing our team members, knowing who we are as brands, starting from that inside out and truly we can out care the competition. It's about that craveability, creating content that matters, that is really a, a moving someone in a positive way, whether that is educating them, entertaining them, doing a mix of both, but you are showing up to deliver something of service that is truly connecting your community to your brand like a magnet versus a bullhorn. If you want to learn more about how to apply this to your business now, getting started, getting your team trained and prepared, you can go to learnrelationshipmarketing.com where we have some free guides, some video tutorials and worksheets for you to truly take the action to get that momentum started in your business. All right, guys, I want to hear from you. What do you feel is your top predictions of trends and changes in marketing in 2022? What should people start doing? What should they stop doing? I want to hear your input and I want to connect with you in this new year. All right, guys, I wish you all the best to truly help care the competition in 2022. And I look forward to connecting with you soon.